In this part of the lesson, we'll cover the basics of the for next loop. A for next loop continues looping based on the value of a counter. When the counter reaches a specified limit, it automatically stops. We'll demonstrate the basics of this for next loop by creating a subroutine which loops three times and writes information to the immediate window each time it loops. Let's start by creating a brand new blank Excel workbook. We won't need any special files for this example. When we've done that, we can head straight into the Visual Basic Editor and we can insert a new module in the standard way and then create a new subroutine called Basic for Next Loop. A for next loop requires a variable to keep track of how many times the loop has been executed. So let's start by declaring a variable. I'm going to call mine i, although you can use a slightly longer, more descriptive name if you prefer. And I'm going to use the integer data type to make this work. So dim i as integer. To begin a for next loop, you must say which number you want the loop to begin counting from and which number it should count to. We want our loop to count from one to three. So let's begin the loop by adding a line of code which says for i equals one to three. The counter variable counts from a lower to a higher value and you can use any whole number allowed by the data type you've chosen. So we can use any number allowed by the range of the integer data type. To tell the loop to move on to its next iteration, you can use the next keyword and you can optionally include the name of the variable after the next keyword. Each time the code reaches the next keyword, it will increase the value of the counter variable by one and then check that value against the number you've told the loop to count up to. The loop automatically stops once the value of the variable exceeds the upper limit of the loop that you've specified. All that remains is to add some code within the loop to make it print out some information to the immediate window. So let's add a debug.print statement and then let's make it print out a little phrase, a little bit of literal text, loop number, followed by an ampersand and then the value of the i variable. If we then view the immediate window by using the view menu and choosing immediate window or pressing control and G, we can run this subroutine and see the not very impressive result, but one that proves that our loop has run three times. So why might you use a for next loop? Because simply printing out a list of numbers isn't particularly useful or impressive. A for next loop is useful whenever you have a set number or when you can determine the number of iterations to perform. We could create a procedure, for example, which creates a new worksheet for each month of the year by looping 12 times. Let's start by adding a new subroutine called create month sheets. Sub create month sheets. I'd like to add these worksheets to a new workbook. So let's add an instruction that adds a workbook to the workbooks collection. We can say workbooks.add. Then I can declare a variable which allows me to loop 12 times. I'll give the variable a slightly more descriptive name this time. I'll call it month num as integer. We can then begin our for next loop by saying for month num equals one to 12. And then we can end the loop by saying next month num. Now let's add an instruction within the loop which creates a new worksheet and positions it after any existing sheet in the workbook. We can say worksheets.add followed by a reference to the after parameter and then we want to refer to the last sheet in the collection of sheets in that new workbook. So we can say sheets, open some parentheses, sheets.count. Now we can add an instruction which changes the name of the worksheet that's just been added by referencing the active sheet and then we can modify its name property. We can set its name to be the result of the month name function. If I press Control and Spacebar to see the IntelliSense list and look for the month name method. I can then open some parentheses. The month name function converts a number from 1 to 12 into the text version, the text name of the month. So I want to refer to my month num variable, month num. And then I'd also like to make sure the month name is a short month name, so Jan rather than January. And to do that, I can use the abbreviate parameter. I'll set that to true to create the short month name. 
At this point, we can run the subroutine to check the results. So if I run that subroutine, we'll end up with a brand new blank workbook, but this one should have 12 sheets, Jan through December. You can exit from a for next loop before the counter reaches its limit using the exit for statement. In the example we've just created, perhaps we want to create worksheets only up to the current month of the year. So currently I'm in May, so I want to create worksheets only up to May. Let's go back to the code and add an if statement within the loop, which checks if the month num is equal to the month of the current date. So just after we've changed the sheet name, we can say if month num equals month. So we'll use the month function to calculate the number of the month of the current date. If that's true, then we will simply exit the for statement. Once we've done that, let's run the subroutine again. And this time we should see that the new workbook we create only has month sheets up to the month of May. At this point, you can either choose to continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson, or move on to the next part of the lesson, which explains how to use a for next loop to count through a collection of objects.